Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms, and we'd like to welcome you all back here to the channel, right here on YouTube.com, as of course you already know who I am, Mr. Controversy, and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. Now, if you did not get the message last week, I sent it out midway through WrestleMania, and I needed to take a break for a week for multiple reasons, well, two main reasons. Number one because I had a lot of college work. It is the end of the semester and they are piling a lot of material on me. And two, I had to take a break from YouTube for a week because WrestleMania just got me fucking heated over how horrible it was. As soon as Nakamura lost, I turned it off and I just went to bed. I, 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 was, I, was, I was on the verge of having an aneurysm. There was steam coming out of my ears. I was I was not in the right frame of mind to do the lightning flash update last week, but I'm here. I've rejuvenated. I am refurbished. I have refreshed up, and I am back in the game, and I'm ready to get back in the swing of things. I watched Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and NXT, and I got some very interesting reports on perhaps the greatest Royal Rumble and what the outcome might be of one of the main matches. And I got my thoughts on the Superstar Shake-Up as well. So, let's get right into the weekly show reviews. First night of the Superstar Shake-Up, Monday Night Raw started off with Kurt Angle kicking off the show. And, of all people, Jinder Mahal was the first pick for Monday Night Raw. So, Mahal is on Monday Night Raw. And, obviously, Mahal was ragging on Kurt Angle for not giving him the same treatment as Brock Lesnar. At this rate... Kurt Hawkins would be considered first, in my book, for Brock Lesnar treatment before Jinder Mahal. But anyway, all of this led to a United States Championship open challenge, if you want to call it that, in which Jeff Hardy accepted, and Kurt Angle made the match official, and Jeff Hardy defeated Jinder Mahal to win the United States title. It was a good match, and I applaud WWE for taking the title off of Jinder Mahal, giving it to a worthy competitor like Jeff Hardy, and I expect big things for Jeff Hardy in the future. It was a good way to start off Monday Night Raw, and Mahal invoked his rematch clause at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Bailey versus Sasha actually ended in a disqualification, and it was actually turning into a good match, but then the Riot Squad interrupted, so the Riot Squad is on Monday Night Raw. I don't really expect too much from the Riot Squad at this rate, but we're going to see how things play out. The Authors of Pain defeated Heat Slater and Rhino, and I like that Slater and, I, uh, and uh, Rhino got some offense in there. It, uh, they were able to showcase what they are capable of, but in the end, the Authors of Pain did get the win, as they should have. And I expect big things for the Authors of Pain. I am looking forward to see, um, to seeing the types of matchups we can get with the Authors of Pain and some of the new tag teams coming in, maybe Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, or The Revival, or Drew McIntyre and... Dolph Ziggler, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Miss TV, with your host, The Miz, introduced Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens to Monday Night Raw, and Kurt Angle came out, and he actually said, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what are you doing? Both of them, they lost their opportunity last week, but Sami Zayn, like the genius that he is, he takes out a piece of paper emailed, I believe, by Stephanie, and he puts on his he puts on these glasses and made him look like an old man. And he's shaking and going up and down with his voice. And he's just just acting like a complete moron. And that's what that's what made the segment so great because Sami Zayn was just reading the letter. And as he was going through it, he just kept on making all these body movements and mannerisms. And they said that uh, Stephanie McMahon overruled Kurt Angle's decision. However, however. The Miz is going to SmackDown Live alone. I like that pick. I very much like that pick. You know why? Because A, could set up for Miz and Daniel Bryan. B, The Miz is going to have to venture into the deep end on his own. No more Alex, uh, Axel and uh, Dallas. He's going to have to grow a pair of balls, as I've been saying for a while. Now, this could actually give me a reason to get behind The Miz and his character. Because I've never been uh, able to get behind The Miz or his Intercontinental Championship reigns. This, I like this uh, I like this decision. Very, very good. 
Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt then defeated The Revival. It was a decent match for what it was, and Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt will face the bar at the Greatest Royal Rumble, in which I believe they will win the Raw Tag Team titles. Brizongo is on Raw, and the segment that Brizongo had with The Bar... Fandango, he was gyrating his hips, and then Fandango was looking at Seamus' mohawk, and he goes, Oh, well, God, what, what is this? That is, that is a fashion felony, that mohawk. And I'm, and I'm laughing my ass off Fandango. I don't know what it is, but Fandango, Fandango always finds new ways, uh, new ways to make me laugh. And they were chucking tickets at the bar, calling out their cargo jackets and... Skirts, as they called it, and Cesaro's like, it's a kelp, damn it. And they ended up getting a win over the bar later on in the show. Natalia is also on Raw. She had a run in with Ronda Rousey backstage. Ember Moon defeated Mickey James, and Mickey James, I'm not sure if it was Ember Moon's momentum or if it was just Mickey James herself, but Mickey James sold the eclipse as if she got her neck broken. Perfect, perfect sell the eclipse. And props to Mickey James. Dolph Ziggler is also on Raw. And before he could finish what he was uh, saying, he was interrupted by Titus Worldwide. And they made him an offer to join Titus Worldwide. However, McIntyre did not come alone. Drew McIntyre, uh, excuse me, um, Ziggler did not come alone. Drew McIntyre out of nowhere shows up, takes out both Titus and Apollo. And then McIntyre and Ziggler, they did a picture-perfect tag team move, a Claymore-Zigzag combination in perfect syncopation. It looked absolutely phenomenal, and if they keep these guys together in the tag team division, in the tag team division, they've uh, revamped the tag team division up a little bit. Obviously, you got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt, the Authors of Pain, The Revival, Drew McIntyre, and Dolph Ziggler. It's a damn good raw tag team division you got going on over there. Roman Reigns then came out. He cut another terrible, terrible, boring, scripted promo. Blah, blah, blah. Samoa Joe came out. He basically said the same thing that he did last week. It really wasn't all that special. But I very much enjoy Samoa Joe, without a doubt. And Joe just kind of teased getting in the ring against Roman Reigns. That was pretty much that. This really didn't do too much for the show. But it was an uh, entertaining segment nonetheless. Thanks to Samoa Joe. Natalia then defeated Mandy Rose of Absolution. Ronda actually came out to make the save because Absolution then started attacking Natalia. And Ronda just basically knocked the hell out of Sonya Deville. I actually tweeted, uh, ripped Sonya Deville because Ronda Rousey did a judo like takedown and Sonya Deville hit hard. So I'm actually going to call Natalia to turn heel somewhere down the line and we're going to get Natalia versus Ronda Rousey. Maybe at Backlash or at Money in the Bank. I feel as though they're going to keep Ronda special, but not to a Brock Lesnar extent. Baron Corbin had a promo package for his Monday Night Raw debut, which is probably going to take place next week on Monday Night Raw. Very much looking forward to what they do with Corbin. Then uh, Elias. Elias, um, he was involved in a backstage segment, but even this backstage segment was fantastic for Elias. He called Renee Rachel... And then, and then he called, he called Hartford a rinky dink dirt bag of a town. You could definitely put that on a t-shirt and sell it, Elias. And then Elias wanted to do a private concert for Renee Young. And, and uh, Renee Young said, well, we ran out of time. Back to you, Cole. I don't know what is it about Elias, man, but El El Elias, Elias is just like Fandango, finding new ways to impress me, finding new ways to make me laugh. This is a very entertaining segment, and then it transitioned into the main event. And Bobby Roode has made Monday Night Raw glorious. Bobby Roode is on Monday Night Raw, and he teamed with Strowman, Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor to defeat... Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, The Miz, and The Miz Taraj. And that was Monday Night Raw. It was a good show. Really, the first two hours really made the show. But uh, it was a good show nonetheless. It was a rather entertaining night for the first night of the Superstar Shake-Up. Now, moving on to SmackDown Live. Styles kicked off the show. 
And Styles said he wanted Nakamura. He said Nakamura was basically a cheap shot artist. He was he showed his true colors. And then Aiden English and Rusev actually came out to accept Styles' challenge. And AJ then had a match with Rusev, and he had, he had Rusev locked in the calf crusher until Aiden English broke it up. And then Brian came out to make the uh, to make the save, and Paige made a tag team match for later that night. Oh, and uh, by the way, some other draft picks or shakeup picks from SmackDown to Raw also included Zack Ryder, Mojo Rawley, The Ascension, Mike Kanellis, and Chad Gable. This actually tied into the next segment. Shelton Benjamin is now without Chad Gable, and he said he wanted competition. I'm liking Shelton Benjamin in a singles role. This could be very beneficial to him. Randy Orton then seemed to answer the challenge, but his music stopped as he was walking down the ramp, and Jeff Hardy came out. The United States Championship and Jeff Hardy are back on SmackDown. Jeff Hardy then defeated Shelton Benjamin in a very good match, and Jeff Hardy looking to ride his wave of momentum on SmackDown Live as the United States Champion. Miz is set to debut on SmackDown Live next week. He cut a cell phone promo, as only WWE has been doing as of lately with these cell phone promos. There was his wife there, Marone, M Monroe, Sky, Mizanin was there as well. And Miz was basically just playing the cocky heel that he is always meant to be. And we are looking at The Miz debuting on SmackDown Live next week, probably against the Jobber. And The Miz is going to do whatever it takes to get under the skin of Daniel Bryan, in my opinion. But obviously they're going to save that match for a bigger stage based on what happened later on in the night. Absolution has also been drafted to SmackDown Live. Then we had Luke Harbour defeating Jay Uso. The Bludgeon Brothers then attacked the Usos afterwards. The match went fairly quick. Naomi then came out out of nowhere and just kind of thwarted off the Bludgeon Brothers, kind of just begged and pleaded with the Bludgeon Brothers as they were about to hit Jimmy Uso with one of those huge mallets. But Naomi just begged and pleaded with them to stop. And Luke Harper held Eric Rowan back. So obviously, this is going to continue their build-up towards their greatest Royal Rumble rematch, which could very well be a damn good match and possibly the match of the night. Then, Sin Cara came out for competition, and out of nowhere, I didn't think that they were going to do this, but Samoa Joe has been moved to SmackDown Live, and he defeated Sin Cara. And then, and then Samoa Joe, he made me a believer in everything that he said. He is a promo god. Samoa Joe is now up in that list with the top promo cutters in WWE right now. Along with The Miz, along with Paul Heyman. Samoa Joe's up there. He's definitely up there. He's basically talking about how he's going to destroy Roman Reigns. And now he's going to bring the Intercontinental title to SmackDown. As well as the Universal title. If Roman Reigns is victorious, he's going to ra uh, wrangle the big dog. And he's going to take the Universal title to SmackDown Live as well. Believe that. Samoa Joe, man. I can't get enough of Samoa Joe. There was a promo package for Sanity. This is a good decision. Just like I predicted, Sanity is going to SmackDown Live. Very good decision because now you can set up for Sanity versus the Bludgeon Brothers at a later date. They already screwed up the plan that I had with the Authors of Pain and Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman. Don't screw this up. Then we had Carmella's Melibration, and let me tell you something. Though she may have sounded a little cringeworthy, Carmella acting like a cocky bitch is very good because it just plays up to her um, condescendingness that uh, she possesses. Charlotte then came out, and she basically said, you know, she's not mad at anything, but just remember, it was Billy Kay and Peyton Royce that gave you the opportunity to cash in on me. My guess is she's going to invoke her rematch clause at Backlash. The Iconics then came out. They basically said Charlotte is just going to do nothing but make excuses, yada, yada, yada. And then Becky Lynch came out to save Charlotte from the numbers game. Then we had Charlotte versus Billy Kay. And 
Charlotte then defeated Billy Kay and the Iconics and Carmella attacked both Becky and Charlotte. And I was actually hoping that this would happen. Asuka came out and saved Becky and Charlotte. Very good pick right there. Very, very, very good pick. My call is for Carmella to possibly retain against Charlotte at Backlash, my guess. Because um, I don't really think they're going to treat Carmella as a transitional champion after they've waited all this time to have Carmella cash in. But then again, I wouldn't put it past Road Dog. But I feel as though Carmella is going to retain at Backlash and then she's going to drop it to Asuka at Money in the Bank. She's going to be a transitional champion, but she's not just he, she's not going to hold the title for a month. I really don't think she's going to hold the title for a month based on the fact of how long they've waited to have Carmella cash in and in the fashion that they did it. So, I would much rather see Asuka take the title off Carmella at Money in the Bank, hold the title till WrestleMania, and then we can get Ember Moon versus Asuka at WrestleMania and obviously the supposed rumored, uh, rumored match of Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. Maybe. Maybe. If Ronda Rousey wins the Raw Women's title by that time, Charlotte could possibly win the Royal Rumble. You never know. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, the Good Brothers, are coming to SmackDown Live. Another great decision. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson can do over on SmackDown Live. My guess is being mean and making green and punching the faces of all of SmackDown Live's resident, um, nerds. Oh, man, I can't get enough of Gals and Anderson as well. Gals and Anderson and Samoa Joe really making um, SmackDown Live enjoyable. Also, earlier on in the night, I'm sorry, I actually missed this. Big Cass also returned in a backstage segment with Daniel Bryan. And Big Cass is on SmackDown Live. So, it looks like they are going to be feuding Big Cass with Daniel Bryan. And especially what happened um, later on in the night, that really put the final nail in the coffin for Daniel Bryan's return feud. The Bar also had a little cell phone promo package in which they will be moving to SmackDown, which all the more reason makes me believe that Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt are becoming the Raw Tag Team Champions. R-Truth is also on SmackDown Live. And then my favorite pick, my favorite pick to SmackDown Live... SmackDown Live had a promo package with Zelina Vega. And Zelina Vega is bringing El Idolo to SmackDown Live. Andrade Cien Almas is on SmackDown Live. And let me tell you something. If they play their cards right, I can definitely see Andrade Cien Almas versus Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam for the United States Championship. That right there is a damn good uh, match. Plus, it could boost the prestige of the United States Championship, and it gives Andrade his first major championship victory on the main roster. Then in the main event, Styles and Daniel Bryan versus Rusev Day actually ended in a no contest. Nakamura, like the sly, sadistic son of a bitch he is, not as sly and sadistic as Tommaso Ciampa, but sly and sadistic nonetheless. Nakamura low-blowed AJ Styles, and then Big Cass big boot at Daniel Bryan. So I'm guessing we're probably going to get Big Cass versus Daniel Bryan at Backlash, and it has already been confirmed we are getting Nakamura versus Styles for the WWE Championship at the Greatest Royal Rumble in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Now, on to 205 Live. 205 Live was a great show as always. Mustafa Ali versus Arya Davari actually started off the show. And I like that Mustafa is keeping his WrestleMania entrance. It was a uh, very nice touch at WrestleMania, and it could be a very nice touch to his character as a whole. His character wanting to be the light and try and uh, join everyone together. I like it. Arya Davari basically stated he wanted Mustafa, and he wanted a challenge. And Arya Davari certainly gave Mustafa a challenge. This was a very good match. A lot of uh, great storytelling with Mustafa and Davari. Devari has a very nice super kick. I will give him that. This was a good match, and Mustafa got the win. And a very interesting scenario actually developed on 205 Live. Drake Maverick had a little segment in which he showed that Buddy Murphy 
failed his mandatory 205 Live weigh-in. So Buddy Murphy is off of 205 Live momentarily. Obviously, he's going to cut the weight, and he's going to get back into the swing of things. But Maverick, he makes a 205 Live Cruiserweight gauntlet match for next week, and the winner will go on to face Cedric Alexander at the Greatest Royal Rumble. I can either see Drew Gulak or Mustafa Ali winning this. I would much rather pick Mustafa Ali, but I have a feeling they're going to go with Gulak because they are saving Mustafa Ali's major title win for another time. Brian Kendrick and Jack Gallagher then defeated a couple of jobbers. Obviously, they are getting back into the swing of things. This was Brian Kendrick's return match. He looks very good, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing where these two will end up if if they should introduce the 205 Live Tag Team Championships. And then in the main event, this was a fantastic match as per usual. 205 Live stepping it up with their main events. Dorado and Metalik defeated Tozawa and Atami. This was a fantastic match. Had a lot of great moments. Suicide dives, double springboard moonsaults, the double springboard stunner. And Dorado and Metalik won the Lucha House Party. Got the victory over Akira Tozawa and Hideo Itami with a combinations shooting star press double elbow drop combination. They did it in perfect syncopation and they got the double cover and the double win. So Dorado and Metalik finally get their redemption against Tozawa and Itami. This is far from over. I do not think this is the end of it. This is probably going to be a tag team rivalry that's going to stem on probably until the summer in which one of those teams will become the new Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions. 205 Live, none, nevertheless, great show as per usual. Moving on to NXT. Johnny Gargano kicked off the show. He basically thanked the WWE Universe. He uh, thanked his wife. And he made it clear he's back in NXT and he wants the NXT Championship. Moving on to the first match of that night. Ricochet defeated Fabian Eichner. It was a decent match for what it was. It got Ricochet into the eyes of Full Sail University, and I have no idea how Ricochet does it, but that man, he, 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 he's, he, he's something else. He really is something else. Ricochet, I have no idea how he does that 630 senton so perfectly, but just by that alone, he's going to be something. He's going to be something big. He is the future of the company. He's going to be NXT champion someday. The War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe, then made their NXT debut in which they defeated the Metro Brothers. Obviously, that was a slaughtering. And the War Raiders, uh, War Raiders won with that back suplex leg drop combination. I'm not sure what it's called. I believe I missed it. But nevertheless, it was a... Great finish, nevertheless. That That's actually one of my favorite tag team moves. Moving on, we had a little segment with Shayna Baszler and the entire NXT women's locker room. She's basically taking command, and she was, you know, bullying the rest of the roster, basically saying, you know, you get behind me, you stay in line, or I'm going to put you in line. And obviously, her issues with Dakota Kai are continuing. If this keeps up, I can definitely see Dakota Kai and Shayna Baszler going into an NXT Women's Championship feud. Uh, probably into into TakeOver Chicago. And then, then we are probably going to get Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship at TakeOver Brooklyn 4. And might I also mention that I will be attending NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and also, uh, I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before. I'm going to be walking around outside the arena for any fans, and I'm going to pick out a select few, and I'm going to do some fan interviews, fan preview and prediction interviews. So if you want to get in on, uh, get in on the action, if you want to, um, you want to come meet me, you want to say hello, you want to talk wrestling for a few minutes, you want to give me your predictions. You'll be on you'll be on YouTube.com. You will be on my channel, and I am glad to welcome anyone to uh, have a fan interview, have a chat for a few minutes, get some predictions, and uh, make a nice five-minute video, and you can be on my channel. 
So now, now uh, moving on, enough of the promotion. Moving on, then we had a promo package for a newly revamped Kona Reeves, the finest Kona Reeves. So I'm not sure how this is going to work for him, but nevertheless, they are giving the guy some character. So we're going to see how that plays out. Lars Sullivan then defeated Killian Dane in a no disqualification match. It was a great match, by the way. Two behemoths just colliding, and they were flying all over the place. They were wheeling chairs at each other. Killian Dane actually did that running cross body through the table on Sullivan. And Sullivan looked as though he was legitimately broken in half. That got a close two count. And Sullivan won, as he should have won. Sullivan won with the freak accident on some steel chairs. Next week, we also have Adam Cole versus Oni Lorcan. Uh, Oni Lorcan. Oni Lorcan. For the very first time ever in a North American Championship match. So the North American Championship will be defended for the first time ever. The Undisputed Era also will address the WWE Universe next week. Then, in the main event, Candice LeRae defeated Zelina Vega and Andrade San Almas and Johnny. They had an altercation, which resulted in a double Gargano escape and a double tap out. Then, interesting scenario developing here. Then, Johnny called out Aleister Black by name, and Aleister Black walked out. And he said, you want it? Next week, you have it. So, I'm not sure how they're going to play this out, but apparently... Alistair Black has accepted Johnny Gargano's challenge for next week. If they go through with this, I can definitely see one of two things happening. Either Andrade Cien Almas or Tommaso Ciampa will interfere. And Andrade Cien Almas, remember, he's still in NXT right now. Though he's being promoted for SmackDown, he's still in NXT right now. I can definitely see Andrade Cien Almas getting involved, and he invokes his rematch at TakeOver Chicago, Tommaso Ciampa could also get involved, he could cost Gargano the title, and he could have a rematch with Gargano at TakeOver Chicago, basically saying, look, you may have beaten me once, but let me tell you something, you got lucky because my knee wasn't 100%, he's already, he's already making excuses on Twitter saying his knee wasn't 100%, uh, it was unsanctioned and it didn't count, you ruined my life and stuff like that. He's already making excuses on Twitter. Go check his Twitter handle if you don't believe me. So I can definitely see a rematch between Gargano and Ciampa and Aleister Black and Andrade Cien Almas. Both of those rematches could very well take place at TakeOver Chicago. Now, on to the news, rumors, and reports. Oh, and by the way, by the way, these um, next couple of reports that I have, well, the first one specifically, this is going to shut down any Roman Reigns fanboy or any Roman Reigns fangirl who are too stupid to realize that Roman Reigns is not over. Because I got two sources that says why Brock Lesnar's contract was extended. Listen closely. Listen closely, delinquents. Number one, cage side seats reported that Brock Lesnar's WWE deal was extended due to the fact that Vince McMahon knew Roman Reigns was not getting over at WrestleMania. And his deal was to extend his contract to drop the Universal title to Roman in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia at the Greatest Royal Rumble. And not only that... Not only that, but Jeremy Botter also reported that Vince changed the ending of the Brock Lesnar-Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania because Roman wasn't getting over. So now I actually have two sources that says Roman was not getting over, and Vince even knows Roman's not getting over. Vince, plus these two other sources, they both know Roman was not getting over, and Roman is not over. The only way he will be over is a bona fide heel turn with the extended period of time of him staying out of the main event scene with no plan to insert him back into the main event scene in the most cringe-like fashion. So don't anyone, I don't want to hear anyone tell me that Roman Reigns is over. Because Vince knows his precious Roman isn't over.
Just because you get a reaction doesn't mean you're over. The reasoning behind the reaction is what matters. Moving on. I actually got a report on one of the now co-branded pay-per-views. July 15th or 16th, I believe, is Extreme Rules. And it is taking place at the, the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to happen considering what happened in the Superstar Shakeup, but the P the PPG Paints Arena, they announced on their website, they actually sent out an email a week ago, and the email advertised a triple threat match for the WWE Championship at Extreme Rules concerning Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, and Baron Corbin. Now, I know there's been a report going around that Vince is high on Corbin, which is why he moved him to Raw, and Corbin's set to get a big push. However, concerning that fact alone, and Corbin being moved to Monday Night Raw, I do not see this match taking place. Obviously, they could still go through with that, considering that all pay-per-views are co-branded, but based on what has happened over the course of that two-day shakeup, I really don't see this happening. And now... Let me give my weekly shout out to Mr. Slice Wrestling. Hashtag Slice Knows. Follow him at Slice Wrestling. And I quote this tweet from him. Report. Early creative plans are for a shield triple threat match to take place at WrestleMania. Now, this is a good decision and a bad decision at the same time. This is a good decision because... It gives the Shield triple threat match a big, a bigger stage than just Battleground. It uh, gives all three guys a top main event spot in which they deserve. But you're getting Roman back into the main event scene at WrestleMania for a fifth year in a row. A fifth year in a row. Now, obviously, plans could be subjected to change, but honestly, do you really think that Plans will be subjected to change now when, over a year ago, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns was advertised for WrestleMania 34 in the plans before WrestleMania 33 was even done. I really have no problem with the Shield triple threat match, but honest to God, how many times is Roman Reigns going to main event WrestleMania? I do not want to have to go into my 25th birthday and Roman Reigns will have already main evented 10 WrestleManias. I really don't. I really don't. You're really testing my patience, Vince McMahon. And my final report of the day before I pop a vein in my head. According to PW Insider, Rey Mysterio is set to make his return at the Greatest Royal Rumble, though I don't know if he will be competing in that 50-man Royal Rumble, or if he will be competing in a mid-card match on the event. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of the Lightning Flash Update. I would like to thank each and every one of you who tuned into this video. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the. DJ Storms, do not forget to check out the rundown for WrestleMania if you missed it. Do not forget to check out the Lightning Flash update next week. Do not forget, do not forget, as I've already said in this video, I will be attending NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. I will be on the camera side. I will be wearing the official DJ Storms t-shirt. And I will be conducting fan interviews, fan preview and predictions before the show. So if anyone wants to get involved in a fan interview before the show... Please uh, tweet me. You can direct message me if you're a follower of me, and we can set up a date. I'm already trying to uh, book Brock Lesnar, guy. So, so uh, keep in mind, you could very well be on my channel. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Storms. This has been the Lightning Flash Update, and you have a great weekend.